Provenance has a soul unlike any place I have ever been to. Its flats, channels and lagoons hold mysteries which we are only just beginning to discover. On the second day we were sticking to the western side of the atoll and we began to fish a drainage not far from the dugong and we were hunting over large open turtle grass flats looking for bow waves and rays dropping off the central area. Although the light was not on our side, Brendan had spotted a couple of bow waves waking in our direction. The only thing giving away their position was the ripple of their movement against the incoming tide. Jim Haspel managed to get a couple of shots in, but before we knew it, the fish had vanished. Without light, you have to look at the water, not into the water, for any sign that may give away their position. So right now we're on the um, western side of Providence. The, the weather's not great, I have to admit, sadly. There's some squalls which keep coming in. We are on low tide right now. Um, it's about half past 10, 11 in the morning and the tide is right out. So this is what we're doing effectively is fishing along the edges here looking in all these holes and pockets for GTs which are waiting um, as the tide pushes off and then waiting to get back onto the flats as the tide pushes back on again. So sometimes it's a question of just being speculative and putting a few casts into little holes here and there, see if anything's holed up, or just hunting through the pockets and the holes and seeing what you can find because you never know what could be hiding in these little pockets. So we've got our 12 weight here and just especially off the edges it's a great spot to uh, see if there's anything hold up and just make a cast here and there as you work your way along until you have a chance to maybe spot something in the clear water but um, it's a good mottled bottom here so it's a combination of um, hard coral turtle grass and uh, white sand pockets which makes um, spotting these fish considerably easier Keep persevering, the tide's going to start pushing soon and then hopefully all of these fish are going to come flooding back onto the flats looking for a meal. Luckily for us, the light improved and Brendan took us up to a white sand GT highway where hopefully we could intercept some fish coming back onto the atoll. I am fishing today with Mr James Hasbro. A little later the tide had dropped out significantly, so Brendan moored the boat and the three of us marched over the apex into one of the interior lagoons. Spotted a single bumpy just feeding on the edge of the lagoon here. So we're going to try and feed him a crab. It's gone the other way. It's a big fish to find in a small lagoon like this. No, he disappeared into the depths from whence he came. I better move on up or otherwise I'm going to get left behind. I don't want to get left behind out here. A shark there. Hmm, he's coming onto the turtle grass. You're still over there, bud. We're now on the channel edge of the lagoon and we are just waiting for the push to really kick in. The flats are already beginning to flood quite quickly. It's all beginning to disappear. So we are stood out on a few higher areas so we can try and get some vision and see if we can't intercept some of these GTs coming in. Here comes the shark. Yeah, you've got a big shark coming in. Might be a GT on the shark. shark coming to investigate me. There he goes. 
Okay. On the other side of the lagoon, Jim hit a fantastic fish off the back of a ray that absolutely charged his fly. You can hear that straining. Brendan landed it expertly, but sadly this fish appeared to be a little bit camera shy. So now the push has started in earnest. We're now wading with the sun behind us, looking for rays, looking for bow waves, trying not to fall over. Couldn't really have asked for better conditions this afternoon, so the lagoon edge is just there. These fish are going to be making their way back up onto the lagoon edge. Big squadron of bumpies. Stalking bumpies on a high spring tide is always going to be challenging. The fast water pulls the crab up in the water, making it very difficult to get a decent presentation at the right depth. There's no stingray. Is that the one you were looking at earlier? No friends. Here's Mr. Stingray, and hopefully, normally, we would he would have friends on him. A little while later, I found one that did have a friend on him. There's nothing like releasing one of these majestic creatures and watching it swim away again. As the tidal push increased, we did find another pod of bumpies and Jim was determined to try and pull one out of the school. Watching these huge fish tail on the flats is a sight to behold. As so often happens with fishing, the time had run out, so we grabbed a cold beer and turned for home. Although Jim and I may not have caught a huge number of fish, we really enjoyed the day as we'd seen a good number of GTs on rays, which is one of the best way to fish for them.